What's up guys, Emmanuel here, and today I wanna to do a little something different. Today I actually wanna do a walkthrough of one of the more popular IDX platforms available on the market right now for real estate agents, uh, and that is the iHome Finder IDX. So for those of you that are interested in the iHome Finder IDX, I'm hoping that this very top level overview of the iHome Finder dashboard will give you a little bit more insight on how their application works and hopefully give you some better decision making power uh, in terms of who to move forward with when you're integrating IDX with your website. So let's go. So today's video is really just to cover a very high level overview or walkthrough of the iHome Finder dashboard. It's not gonna be a video about how to properly set it up or install it within your WordPress website or, or platform for that matter. And it's also not gonna be detailing the granular functionalities of all of the different features within iHome Finder. It's simply just a walkthrough of the dashboard. But if you do have questions about the software application itself, you know how to get a hold of me. Please feel free to reach out and I will be happy to help. We're gonna be reviewing the dashboard itself through one of my dummy websites uh, that I use for demonstration purposes, Los Angeles Real Estate Unlimited.com for that matter. Uh, and of course, after you log into your website, you're gonna have to navigate to the plugin itself and click to access your iHome Finder dashboard. But once you click on that, uh, you're gonna be greeted with a screen that looks like this. Okay, so upon logging into your iHome Finder dashboard, you're greeted with this. And what I wanna do now is walk you through the basic understanding of the navigation and how to kind of make your way through the dashboard itself. This top part here is your top navigation and it's really uh, what's used to drill down into the main functionality or functionalities of the iHome Finder system or software itself. And what you have here on the left are your sub navigations. So you can consider this as the parent links and everything here on the left are kind of the child links under that parent category. So upon initial load of the dashboard, uh, what you're looking at here is essentially your lead activity. Uh, on the left column here, you see a list of all of the leads that have been captured through your system as well as how your system or how the iHome Finder software is interacting and engaging with those leads. And then on the right here, you see the most recent activity as well as types of trends. By the way, just a heads up, this is all dummy data for a demo site. So, um, you know, take the information sparingly. A lot of this is just kind of placed there for, again, demonstration purposes. Now, when it comes to the main features of the iHome Finder uh, lead activity dashboard, one of the cool things that you can do is as long as a user uh, has signed up or created an account on your website, you're actually able to monitor and track all of their interactions and engagements with your website. So let me open up you know, an example uh, lead here and show you exactly what I'm referring to. So in this case, I get, I can see, you know, the contacts information when they were added into the system as well as their last activity date. And here on the right side, I can actually see their activity. This is essentially what they've searched for. Um, in this case, it's a multi-unit in the zip code 91104. Uh, other things that you can see or view are subscriptions. So if they signed up for any automatic campaigns or automation campaigns, or maybe market reports or email or save searches for email alerts, you can see all that stuff here. Uh, in addition to that, if you wanted to create your own subscription automations for that particular lead, you do have the ability to add that here as well. And with regards to this last tab, Property Organizer, uh, it gets you a little bit more granular information about some of their saved searches, as well as some of their favorite properties. So if they did favorite a property on the front end of your website, it would appear here. Or if they saved a search, you would see that it would appear here. And you can of course throw it away or turn off the email alerts if you know, they're just getting inundated with too many emails. Now let's talk about the left navigation here. Uh, lead activity, of course, is the main page that you land on when your dashboard loads, but leads list gives you a total list of all of the leads within the uh, application itself. So this is your way of reviewing everyone that's been captured through your website, or maybe leads that you've added uh, outside from different sources like Zillow or like any other type of marketing that you're doing. Now, another cool feature of iHome Finder is that it allows you to export your leads. So in the event 
that you have a CRM and you wanted to just export all that information and import it to your CRM, you do have the ability to do that as well through the interface. The last cool feature for iHome Finder is the low activity settings. So in some cases, I do know that some leads tend to get a little frustrated when you're constantly emailing them or if they have multiple searches saved on your system and they're constantly being bombarded, you have the ability to set frequencies for those emails so it staggers out the emails a little bit more and this is kind of the function within the dashboard that allows you to make that adjustment to that setting. Now, moving on from here, I wanna show you the markets page. Now, the markets page is best articulated as a page where you can create specific landing pages on your website for communities or neighborhoods uh, that you, you are farming. So for example, as you can see here, these are all the pages that I've created for my demo site uh, that I'm using as landing pages that will obviously populate dynamically with new properties uh, as soon as they hit the market, as well as provide you with market report information and things like that. One cool feature that I think you can utilize in making these pages is that if you wanted to focus primarily on a particular condominium or building or structure, you do have the ability to use a draw tool and draw around a specific block or a specific building to only showcase properties within that building that are available or listed on the market. Now, moving on, let's talk a little bit more about the listings tab. Listings or active listings is your way of viewing all of the listings that are active associated either to your DRE number or maybe your brokerage's DRE number. You'll have a full list of those listings on this page here. But in addition to that, if you do have any sold listings that you want to feature on your website. Uh, if you look here on the left navigation, uh, you do have the option for sold slash off market where you can post those sold listings as well as supplemental. Now supplemental, I know the, the word is a little funky, but in terms of using it in context, you can think of this as your pocket listings page or a page where you can load uh, off market listings to your website. And that's essentially what this supplemental page or interface is made for. And of course the markets page just links you back to the markets tab that I was reviewing with you uh, earlier. Now, when it comes to reports, now with regards to reports, this is really a high level overview of all of the interactions and engagements that your website is receiving that you can view from your iHome Finder dashboard. So not, without getting too deep into the weeds of all of the different functions and features of the reporting page, you can see here that you can see a snapshot of new leads, total property searches, pages viewed, email subscriptions, et cetera, et cetera. And then you can kind of monitor visually on these graphs um, your performance day over day or maybe month over month, year over year. Now, if we look at the sub pages of the reports tab, we can see that we can view email activity, emails that were sent out for your subscribed users within your website, organizer activity, which is of course, save searches and save properties, uh, leads and contacts, another way to view information for everyone captured through the website, as well as mobile statistics. Uh, and of course, this is your way of getting mobile analytics uh, because everyone, as we all know, views most of their websites uh, through mobile devices nowadays versus just a regular desktop application. Now, moving forward from this, we do go to the setup page. And of course, the setup page is just being able to customize the inner workings of your iHome Finder application within your website, like uh, changing passwords or maybe customizing pages or your email uh, templates. You can do all that from this setup page. I'm not gonna go too deep into this because it's gonna be a very lengthy video if I start uh, breaking down every single function of the setup, but just know that this is where you can go to get all those customizations done within the iHome Finder dashboard. And lastly is the communications tab. Uh, if you have a paid account, for the marketing automations through iHome Finder, this is where you can get all of that information essentially set up. And then of course you have the link uh, to the front end of your website. Then you can just simply access that by clicking that button. And that takes us to the end of your iHome Finder dashboard walkthrough. And there you have it, a very brief overview of the iHome Finder dashboard. Now, if you have any questions about the iHome Finder plugin itself, or maybe need help setting it up, please drop a comment below or just reach out to me directly. I am more than happy to help. And if you like these styles of videos, please let me know, drop a comment below. I'll be more than happy to create more video walkthroughs 
for common real estate applications. Aside from that, I hope you guys found this video helpful and informative. And if you did, you know the deal, please make sure you click the like button. You know it helps out the video and the channel as well as click that subscribe button and the bell icon. Uh, so you'll get notified for more future videos just like this one. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you on the next video. Bye.